knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Wrapping things up with phylum rotifera, we reach the acanthocephalans. These are obligate endoparasites, meaning they are only found within the bodies of other animals, as they cannot survive outside of their host for long. The clade was once considered the sister phylum to rotifera, but more recent analyses have placed them instead as a major clade within the rotifer phylum, though their exact relationship to other rotifer clades is still contested. As of 2022, modern cladograms place acanthocephalins as a subclass or clade alongside the deloid and sisinid rotifers. Acanthocephala get their namesake from their most distinctive feature, a cylindrical, irreversible proboscis that bears rows of curved spines. This proboscis, when averted, meaning turned inside out, is used to anchor the parasite to the host's intestinal wall. Like the free-living rotifers, some spiny-headed worms are considered to be cosmopolitan, meaning they can be found all over the world, and they include between 1,100 and 1,500 described species. Their total species count is currently contested as they are the subject of numerous ongoing phylogenic studies. Species range in size from less than 2 millimeters to up to 1 meter in length. Females are generally slightly larger than males, and both sexes are bilaterally flattened with numerous wrinkles throughout the body that aid in increasing the animal's surface area. Since acanthocephalins completely lack a mouth, they absorb nutrients from their host directly across their body walls. Up to 80% of their mass is devoted to their unique lacunar system of fluid-filled canals. These animals have no heart, respiratory, digestive, or true circulatory system, but the muscles of the body wall form tubes that connect to the lacunar system. This forms a network of contractile tubes so that the body wall muscles collectively function similarly to a heart. The animal is then able to pump lacunar fluid throughout the body by squeezing these muscles. This system essentially acts as a rudimentary circulatory system, paired with an excretory system comprised of a pair of flame cells containing protonephridia, it is responsible for moving fluids into, within, and out of the animal. The acanthocephalin nervous system consists of a central ganglion within the proboscis receptacle and nerves through the proboscis and body. Though they do have sensory endings in the proboscis and genital area, the majority of the nervous system and sensory organs are greatly reduced, as is common in obligate endoparasites. All known acanthocephalins are dioecious, meaning they possess either male or female reproductive organs. However, complete life cycles have only been worked out for a handful of species, as there are currently over 1,000 species only known from their adult phase. Adult spiny-headed worms mate within their final vertebrate host. Once an egg is fertilized, it matures and subsequently leaves the female's body through her oviduct, where it then passes into the host's alimentary canal and is expelled from the host within the feces. In order for the egg to develop from this stage, it must be consumed by an arthropod, usually a crustacean. Inside the intermediate host, the egg develops into an acanthala. It then penetrates the gut wall, moves into the body cavity, and cysts, and begins transformation into the infective cystocanth stage. This form has all the organs of the adult except the reproductive ones. The parasite is released when the first intermediate host is ingested. If this new host is a suitable final host, such as a vertebrate, the cystocanth develops into a mature adult. However, if the host is unsuitable, like a larger crustacean, the parasite will instead reform a cyst. It then feeds within the final host, where it grows and develops its sexual organs. Mating will then occur. Luckily, human infection by spiny-headed worms is extremely rare. The species Monoliformis monoliformis is the most common parasitic acanthocephalin found in humans, but since it requires its primary host to consume raw infested beetles or cockroaches, it very rarely passes to humans. Another potential human parasite are individuals of the genus Macrocantharynchus. 
otherwise known as the giant thorny-headed worm of swine, which occur throughout the world in the small intestine of pigs and very rarely in humans. In most cases, there is very little inflammation, and the parasite can coexist within its host peacefully. However, in rare cases, infections can cause great pain, lacerations, ulcers, and even death due to multiple infections. And with that gruesome image, we conclude our study of the parasitic clade Acanthocephala and the phylum Rotifera in general. Let's move forward and introduce the second most biodiverse phylum on the planet, Mollusca. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.